Hey guys, my name is Moon, and welcome back for more Umineko When They Cry, episode 2. So, last time we started, yeah, this episode, we saw George and Shannon, right, having a date, and then afterwards, we see Krause's family and Avis' family, right, having a meeting. So, there's no date right now, like, yeah, there's nothing written here. So, I guess this is set before the events of, I guess, the family conference, right? When everyone is actually here. So, let's see what happens today. We're with Jessica. Let's go. Shannon and Jessica were in the Rose Garden. Jessica still hadn't returned to the parlor after getting into a fight with her mom and was nonchalantly killing time here. Whenever I made a careless mistake and George was around, I'm pretty sure he'd always naturally smooth things over and restore harmony. Maybe it wasn't something as direct as picking up a fork that had been dropped, but that was his way of caring. Even servants have their pride. They want to fix their own mistakes by themselves. And if a guest lends them a hand, they'll lose face. It's kind of like an art to him. I like how Shannon is always blushing. Whenever she's talking about George. For once, Shannon had disagreed with Jessica in a slightly forceful tone, which immediately caught Jessica's attention. I guess this is why uh, Shan I don't know, Shannon and Jessica knows that George and uh, Shannon are kind of in a relationship, right? In the first episode, right? She was saying, uh, didn't you notice? Uh, she was saying to Butler, right? If I'm correct. What? <laughs> Family oriented girls. Okay. あ、私のですか。そんな私にはその、そんな資格ありませんし。資格はあるぜ。何年も昔から顔を合わせてて仲間幼馴染状態。互いに男女であることを意識しない。ナチュラルな関係ってのは一度意識し始めるとトントン
It looked like he'd seen them as well. He headed over, waving his hand. Shannon had to frantically try and regain her ordinary composure before George reached them. Oh, he came down, finally. Can we actually see that as well, the conversations between them? それは抜け出して正解だよ。じいさまの顔を拝むくらいなら、薬病神に that's the reason they visited is to ask for more money, I guess. I mean, yes, in episode 1, they had a deal there. Uh, the, the parents were talking about the deals, right? On uh, the percentage, I guess, of them sharing the money. I guess. That's right. This wasn't the customary annual October family conference. Ava's family had visited to apply for a business loan from the head family. Kinzo had vast resources and lent those out to his children. Of course, they didn't borrow money because they were living in poverty. How would they expand their business with the vast sums they wanted to borrow? How much interest would be attached and how long would they have to repay it? This wasn't a sort of loan designed for the poor. Yeah, there's a different kind of loan. When, uh, I guess, uh, normal or poor people borrow money, it's when they, yeah, they're broke or they need to pay something right now. But for rich people, it's kind of different. They borrow money so they can yeah, expand more and become much more richer, right? Or try to become much more richer, if it succeeds, right? It was a loan for those who were on the offensive. Kinzo strictly judged whether it'd be worth lending out his fortune, and afterwards he strictly oversaw its use. So Rokinjima would sometimes play host to the spectacle where relatives visited and described their businesses to Kinzo. To the parents, these meetings burdened them with a the strain of having to move a vast amount of money. But to Jessica, who lived on this isolated island called Rokinjima, it was a precious opportunity to meet up with her cousins. So being able to talk with occasional guests such as George like this immediately cured the bad mood she'd gotten from that fight with her mom. I mean the money that they're lending though It's not like Oh I'm gonna borrow 100,000 yen 10,000 yen A million yen No It's much more bigger than that I think it's vast amounts of money So Yeah That's why Like even though they're super rich I, yeah, they're still cautious of that. お金を貸すとき、慎重になるのは当然のことだよ。もちろんうちの父さんも借り入れた分で事業を拡大し、しっかり返却できるプランを持って訪れてる。あとは、プレゼンテーション次第ってところだろうね。本当は、脇で見させ
それにしても今年もこの庭園の花は本当に素敵だね George stretched as he said that and he smoothly changed the subject away from one that was a little gloomy This time, Shannon noticed it too. This person, George, could sensitively figure out the situation and always change the subject to something harmonious out of kindness. It was so smooth that Shannon hadn't noticed it until today. Today, Shannon really had to admire the way George did that. Of the boys close to Shannon's age that she'd known, nearly all been classmates during her period of mandatory education. But they had all been young and none had possessed the composure George had. Mere moments ago, he'd been just another guest. But right now, she couldn't help but think of him as something more. However, such thoughts were mere distractions from her work as a servant. Shannon tried to chase them away with a small shake of her head. Hmm? Lose the あの、お茶のご用意をしましょうか。その先ほどのアールグレイを改めてご用意します。紅茶の名前覚えてくれたんだね。嬉しいよ。そ、その、ん？その。Shannon was finally able to put her gratitude into words. If you wrote it out, it wouldn't be very long. But Shannon had a needed a little spark of courage to say it out loud. But George played dumb. He seemed to be playing the gentleman in his own way, letting her know he wasn't doing it out of a desire for gratitude. George responds, or George responds, seemed to be more or less exactly what Jessica had predicted. She couldn't help but burst out laughing. Nah, こういうところ気づったらしいだろ。Jessica poked fun at Shannon as the latter remained silent and red faced. George didn't know the details, but he naturally joined in and laughing the same way. The three of them lazily walked around the garden, catching up on recent events. George, as the oldest cousin, talked about his life experience. Jessica talked about recent life on Arokinjima, and Shannon talked about her recent work. Honestly, did we see a scene like this last time? Yeah, if you look at it, you can see how beautiful it is. By the way, right? Oh, by the way, I actually the other day I saw that yeah the the mansion. They said the mansion in this game, uh, it had a counterpart in real life, right? So that was pretty cool, right? So they they made this mansion out of that mansion that they saw in real life. I don't know what it's called, but it is in Tokyo, right? So that's a, that's a nice uh, a nice detail. I mean, I saw that the other day. I forgot where, but I, I did see that. Even when Shannon heard the others talk about deeply interesting things, she never felt any particular interest in the actual content of their stories. She was nothing more than a servant, and she had no intention of delving into her master's lives. Yeah, she simply wanted them to enjoy their time speaking with her, and would only pretend to listen intently and nod at the right moments. But for some reason, the things George talked about today seemed to catch her interest powerfully. Even things she'd normally ignore felt like they contained a trace of kindness behind the words. For some reason, she wanted to know more things about George, no matter how trivial. So she stared at him, or stared fixatedly at him. She thought that as far as looks went, this Oshirumiya George was probably about average, and it didn't stick out in any particular way. Okay, 
but he was diligent, serious, and had a deep, deep prudence which allowed him to understand people's hearts and show concern. But she never noticed these things before now. She may not have met him many times, but she'd known his face for many years. Even so, she hadn't noticed once until now. Shannon, embarrassed by her own obliviousness, blushed. George, perhaps thinking that Shannon would listen intently to his stories, kept talking happily and at length about things he'd done and seen. But Jessica didn't miss a slight chance or a slight change in Shannon. So she decided she'd change the conversation to the topic she was sure Sa Shannon was the most interested in. So, so. George, Damn. Jessica is on the offensive here. She's uh what do you call this? She wants to see an uh what do you call that? A reaction from Shannon here. And asking George, have you finally gotten a girlfriend? No Normally that reaction should have been answer enough. But for some reason, as she was now, Shannon wouldn't be able to understand it unless he said it clearly. So, so no. ジョージ様はお優しいですから。さぞやその表になるだろうと。いや、その。よせよ、シャーノン。そういう追い詰め方は帰って意地悪だぜ。私は別に意地悪のつもりは<笑><笑> 嬉しい勘違いをありがとう。残念だけど、特定の一人の女性とはまだご縁がないよ。見ての通り、容姿も波形だからね。女の子を楽しくさせてあげられるような気の利いた話術もないし。そ、そんなことないと思います。But I honestly though, will, will this even work though, for example, yeah, for example, nothing happened, right? No, no killings, no nothing like that. Will this go even true, right? When George proposed to Shannon in the first episode, will that uh, go through, right? Like, George is from what? An extremely rich family, right? And then, yeah, his mom, or I guess his mom maybe, right? Would probably arrange him with another... A uh, family, right? A daughter from another rich, rich family. I mean, it's usually like that, right? When you're very, very rich. それに男性の魅力は容姿では測れないところで決まるんじゃないかと思います。だ、だからその上司様はとても魅力的な男性じゃないかとその思います。Shannon was being uncharacteristically verbose. She hardly ever spoke at such length. George seemed fairly pleased to hear someone applaud his charm like this, but he was just a little surprised at this sudden high praise. Jessica, now sure her guest was spot on, appeared to be barely holding back laughter. She probably wanted to say that there was at least one girl very close to him. Shannon avoided saying that much, drawing a final line as a servant. So, so, kana. He had probably never been praised as heavily by a girl before. George's face turned just as bright red as Shannon's. As she watched the two of them, Jessica giggled sadistically. George兄さんもやがては素敵なパートナーと出会うだろうけどさ。今のままじゃきっと上手にパートナーをエスコートできないと思うぜ。
悪かったねその勉強はこれから少しずつしていくよ相手もいないのにどうやって恋愛映画でも見るそれとも秀吉おじさんに習う Are you gonna learn or are you gonna learn from Uncle Hideyoshi? <laughs> the only thing, the only one would,、uh, I, I think, would approve of this, right? At least, yeah, from the family perspective, is Hideyoshi, I think. Because, yeah, when we saw Hideyoshi in episode one, right? When we saw the tragic event, Hideyoshi was talking about it. He was very nice at the way he worded stuff, right? He didn't say it was George that、uh, gave Shannon the ring, but. He was very nice when he was talking about it, right? Maybe, yeah, because Hideyoshi didn't come from a rich family, right? He earned his way、um, up, I guess, right? So, for him, he knows. <laughs> like, imagine if Kinzo, right? Would Kinzo approve of this? I don't think so. こういう話では男は女の子にかなわないね。Normally, when George and Jessica got together, their parents would say George is diligent and admirable, and Jessica is lazy and rude. So it's probably unbearable fun for Jessica to have the roles finally reversed. George realized this as well, so he resigned himself to being the one getting teased for once. ジョージ兄さんさえいいならさシャノンでちょっと練習してみたらシャノンを一日退屈させずにデートに連れてくんだよどうよそそそんなお,お嬢様 When she heard Jessica's audacious plan Shannon's face turned bright red with a poof and a donut of smoke started to rise from her head そそれはとても魅力的な提案だけどシャノンちゃんに悪いよ彼女の貴重な休日を奪うだけじゃない彼女が本当に思いを寄せる人と二人きりで過ごす聖域に僕が割り込んでしまうことになるそんな無粋なことはできないねあっ私もその。思い人とかそういう人はいませんのでそのそういうお気遣いははい無,無用なのです So wait wait when does when is the setting of this one by the way when we saw the date of Shannon and George last time right so is this events that we're seeing right now before that event it, it, maybe it's before right yeah, because there's no date so we don't know it's kind of confusing Shannon's blood had all rushed her head, and it looked like even she didn't know what she was babbling about. Jessica, who knew sh how Shannon normally was, seems to be finding this hilarious. She couldn't hide her cackling laughter anymore. So, 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 男の方との縁なんてありませんしそのってことはシャノンも将来素敵な男性を射止めるために交際の練習が必要だってことじゃないのかよつまり2人とも互いの思惑は一致するわけだなるほどこりゃいいぜ<笑> Jessica irresponsibly or irresponsibly、uh, cheered the two of them on By now, even George was hanging his head and turning red. George? Oh, hell. She's here, Ava. When Ava appeared in what was already an embarrassing situation, both of them got even more flustered. Okay, so this is gonna be interesting. Is Ava gonna notice? Right? Is, is she gonna notice this? Jessica watched and laughed loudly. あ、母さん、ごめんよ、話が込み入っちゃっててね。気づかなかった。これはエヴァ様、大変失礼しました。若い子たち同士で大層盛り上がってたみたいね。あなたたちもみんなお年頃だもの。
。OK。そういう話題が尽きないのもよくわかるわ。<笑>嫌ですね。エヴァおばさんだってまだまだお若いじゃないですか。ヒデヨショージさんとの慣れそめを聞かせてくださいよ。Oh、yeah, that, that one I want to know as well. Yes. Both of them, I guess. Yeah, they have a really good relationship. I mean, Hideyoshi and Eva, right? We saw the relationship. When we saw the second Twilight, right? They were talking there. It was really good between them. They, yeah, they, they loved each other. So I wanted to know how they actually got together. そんなの言えるわけないわよ<笑>本当にみんな若いんだから<笑>そそれで何母さん用があって声をかけたんじゃないのお父さんたちの話が終わったわ、okay. おじいさまにあなたの話をするからいらっしゃい We're going to talk To grandfather about you, so come on. Boku no Hanashi? No, no Hanashkana. Ima mina de steta no do naji Hanashi yo. Ora, de no Hanashi. Oh, she heard all of that, okay. Ah, a no Hanashkai. Betsni, Oji Samani Hanashi yo na kotoja nine janaikana. No, no Hanashta yo. And now Jessica doesn't, doesn't notice? まさか、ジョージ兄さん、誰かと結婚するのそ、それはおめでとうございます。Why, why is she saying congratulations? 違うよ、違うよ。特定の女性はいないってさっき言ったじゃないか。威張ることじゃないでしょう。まったく。Eva smiled bitterly, looking a little exasperated. Ah, what? Georgie, you son, are you? Oh, my god! Oh, my god, a marriage meeting. Oh, my god, this guy. Man, so yeah, I guess they're looking into prospects, right? Prospects. <laughs> Surely, a man, as a man, George wanted to find a partner by himself and bring her home with him. So it seemed he thought it a bit pathetic to meet his partner for the first time in a marriage meeting arranged by his parents. Omiyai to you know, Moto, Nenre ga Sejuk Stikara Sulmono Janai no Kana. Done at a mature age. Yeah, George, George is already,、uh, yeah, he's like 20, 24, probably 24, 25, right? I mean, it doesn't say here, though. Right? It doesn't say. Does it say here?、Uh, where's George? George. Doesn't say the age, though. Yeah, why didn't they say the age here? I keep forgetting what age he is. Judging by Ava's forceful attitude and George's non committal one, the others could catch a glimpse of the story behind this marriage meeting. They didn't know who George was supposed to be meeting, but it was surely someone who would profit Ava's family in a business sense. Yes, yeah. It, was, it is for. Business, honestly, like marriages like this. The very fact they'd be satisfied with a mere engagement to deepen the relationship between the two families rather than an immediate marriage made it feel almost like a political maneuver. Maybe I guess for Hideyoshi and her it was like that. You see that what she said? Certainly nothing wrong with choosing a person with a secure background for your partner in life and then developing your affection later. Maybe for them it was like that, right? I guess for Krauss and Natsu it was also like that. But I guess there was no affection,、uh, really, right? Or maybe, maybe at least in the end, there was no more affection, right? Yeah, I guess. 
エヴァおばさんそれじゃ秀吉おじさんに悪いですよ<笑> Because I guess、uh, Natsuhi couldn't、uh, get a child, right? Because yeah, George is much older and、uh, what do you call this? He, he was born first, right?、Uh, and、uh, yeah, Ava's child rather than Krauss. He, he didn't get a,、uh, a child earlier or much more earlier, right? He actually got a child after, right? But I see. あの人のこと大好きよいつまでも一緒にいて人生を共にしていきたいエヴァ様素晴らしいです本当にご立派です No no so what I'm saying is maybe the affection of Kraus and Natsuhi soured because of that right yeah because yeah, they didn't get a child earlier right maybe that's why When you see the relationship between them, it's like, I mean, yeah, they're husband and wife, but that's it, basically, right? And then when you look at Ava and Hideyoshi, it's different. Arigato. Demo, so no kimochi wa, futari de fufu o steak uchi ni hagukun da mono yo. So ste ima no watashi tachi yori, mirai no watashi tachi no honga motto motto nakayoshi da to shinji te ru. Watashi wa. I mean, it's not always like that, though. You're lucky if you have that. So, I don't know 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 if you have that. So, I don't know. でもその後の夫婦生活はずっとずっと長いのだから一時の感情に任せず慎重に相手を探すべきなのそしてそれは人生経験の未熟なあなたよりお母さんたちの方がうまくやれるとは思わないそそれはそうかもしれないけどあなたは私の自慢の一人息子よ My only son. どこへ出しても恥ずかしくないくらい立派に成長してくれたわバトラ君は席を抜けあなたが今やお父様の血を引く唯一の男孫バトラ君は帰ってきたのに私は帰ってきたのに私は帰ってきたのに私は帰ってきたのに私は帰ってきたのに私は帰ってきたのに私は帰ってきたのに私は帰ってきたのに私は帰ってきたのに私は帰ってきたのに Yeah, he came back though, right? He's still Butler Oshirumiya, and yeah, he had a crust in his outfit. Anata ni fusawashi aite wa shinchou ni eraba na kute wa nara na. As everyone related to the Oshirumiya family knew, Ava adored George immensely. I mean, yeah, why wouldn't, why wouldn't she, right? Only son, and then. No, no, I mean, only child, and then. It's a son as well, right? She could, uh, what do you call this? Argue with her father, with Ginzo, like, yeah, an heir, basically, right? Successor. Because, yeah, Jessica is so different, I guess, right? When, when compared to George. And is a, yeah, and is a guy. I mean, usually that happens, so. But yeah, Jessica is still the heir, though, or heir to Kraus afterwards. But that didn't mean she had pampered him. She had been strict with him and had raised him into a wonderful boy who wouldn't betray her expectations. That was why she treasured him so. But your partner certainly won't be selected based on your parents' profit and loss. Okay, I'll bring you a suitable and truly wonderful woman. Yeah, 
急いで屋敷に行きなさいじゃあごめんね二人とも、okay, we're leaving now. また後でジョージ・バウトゥ・ツー・オブ・デン・アン・アフター・バウィング・ワン・スモール・シャネン・ヒ・ダッシュ・オフ・トゥ・デメンション。じゃあ、おばさんも行くわね。楽しい話を打ち切っちゃってごめんね、ジェシカちゃん。シャノンちゃん。い、いえいえ。気にしないでください。じゃあ、シャノン。私たちは行こうぜ。あ、はい。大丈夫よジェシカちゃんだってきっとそのうち素敵な出会いがあるわよ。Maybe. ジェシカちゃんにふさわしい素敵な方がね。But I think in Ava's heart she hates. I, I guess she dislikes、uh, Jessica. Right? I mean, maybe, maybe she dislikes Jessica because, yeah, Jessica is the heir, right? And not her boy, her, not her George, right? I think, he, I think she dislikes Jessica. Because of, because of just,、uh, what do you call it again? The rankings, right? So it's,、uh, what do you call this?、Uh, I mean, after Kraus, yeah, for example, when he dies, his successor is Jessica, right? Unlike, unless, I mean, unless, for example, Kinzu says that, yo, Kraus, you're not the successor anymore. Right?、Uh, Ava is going to be the successor, so George can be the successor. I mean, he could do that, right? <laughs> But yeah, so Jessica needs to be much more mature, right? Yeah, she, she must be much more mature now. あなたにふさわしい素敵な男性がきっと現れるわよ。はい。ありがとうございます。As Eva giggled and smiled as she approached Shannon's ear with a hand over her mouth as she thought she was trying to tell her a secret. Okay, what is she saying now? What? Wait, we didn't hear it. 用人風情のあなたにぴったり。God damn it. I told you, man. Ava is. She's bad. All right. Look at it. She's mocking Shannon. Now, she heard all the things that they were talking about earlier. She realized that George and Shannon like each other. She realized that. And now, look, she's saying this, right? Imagine, yeah, as I was saying earlier, imagine this. She's saying this and imagine her disdain, I guess, to Jessica. Oh, yeah, because of her being an heir, right? As well. So,、uh, yeah. As, as good as Hideyoshi is, Ava is quite. Yeah. The way she talks, man. Like, look at this. I'm sure you'll find a perfect match for a lowly servant like yourself. Shannon thinks of her as a lower person because of this, right? And you, you, and Ava's saying this to her? God damn. Know your place. Ouch. She definitely noticed that. Yeah, she definitely noticed the one with George. ジョージはお父様の血を引く孫の中では嫡男に当たるのよひょっとしたら未来の後ろ宮家を背負うことになるかもしれない人 See? Look at what she's saying He's a person who may bear the burden of the Ushirumiya family someday in the future She's still banking on that, right? That's why I guess that's why she's so happy that when she had a child it was, yeah, a boy And she was the first one who had a child, right? She's still banking on that. So, no, k i t a n i Kota, the Tameni, Taksano, the Kyo, Kasanet, the Subarashi, Gaigakuni, Hairi, Subarashi, says the Kyo, no Kostaira. So, no, Jojito, Muno, Mushkak, Mukyo, Yona, Shioni, Fuzenga, Triato, Honki, the Omoi.
Those malicious words all poured into Shannon's ear without spoiling or spilling a drop. To Shannon, it was like cold water was being poured in there. This was all whispered to Shannon in secret. And with the smile, or the same smile as before, Jessica, who could only see Ava's expression, didn't think it was anything other than Ava telling Shannon some embarrassing story about love. When their secret conversation ended, Eva patted Shannon's shoulders as though she was urging her on. Eva laughed loudly and headed back to the entrance hall behind Jessica who was cheerfully waving her hand. Shannon reflected very very deeply on those words of Ava about knowing her place. Okay, so I guess we'll take a break here for now. But yeah, it was very, very, what do you call this? Cruel of Ava to say that to Shannon, right? And yeah, pretty much she gave her a reality check, I suppose, right? So we'll see what happens next episode. They're going to go talk to Kinzo, right? They said. So let's see. So we're going to continue this and do more of Omineko When They Cry, episode 2, in the next one. So I'll just see you then, guys. Bye-bye.